In one of our previous videos, we talked about the concept of mixed costs and how a mixed cost essentially has two components. It has a fixed cost component and it has a variable cost component. However, we don't always know, you know what is the amount of the fixed cost, what is the amount of variable cost that comprise uh, this mixed cost. And one way of determining that and figuring that out is called the high-low method. It's just a way that we're going to be able to estimate, kind of break out the different components of this mixed cost so that we can measure them. And so if we think about how we would go about doing this, uh, first we have to kind of have make one assumption uh, to use the high-low method, and that's that we have a linear relationship uh, between the amount of activity, the amount of units produced, so forth, and uh, the amount of the cost. So when I say linear relationship, I'm talking about a straight line, so something like this. Right, so, so we've got our cost over here, and then over here we've got our activity level, number of units. And so we've got a straight line there. And so because we have a linear relationship, we can actually just take the slope of this line, and that slope of the line here is actually going to be our variable cost uh, per unit of activity. So that's what we're really, really doing with the high-low method. And if you remember, the way that you estimate the slope of a line uh, is it's, it's rise over run. Or if you want to think about it in terms of the, the coordinates, is, here's this for you. Uh, but basically, what we've got with the slope is we've got the variable cost per unit of activity. Right? We can think about that. Here's, here's another way to think about it. You just think of it as the change in cost over the change in activity. So activity could be like the number of units produced or something, right? So we, 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 need, we need an estimate for each, right? So we actually are going to take the highest uh, level of activity, what's the cost there, and then what's the cost of the lowest level of activity, uh, and then we're going to look at the number of units and so forth. Let me actually just show this to you. It just might be a little bit easier. So we've got our cost. When we think about like the highest cost, um, actually let me just break down and just show you an example. It's just going to be a little easier and less abstract. So let's say that our highest activity level, and what I'm talking about this, let's say for the year, we measure how many units we produce and what is the cost that we produce, but we do it for each month, right? So let's say that of all the months, the month where we produce the most units, uh, we have 850, and that happens to be, let's just say that's the month of March, right? So we've got 12 months, and, and that's, this is the month where we produce the most units. So that's our highest activity level in terms of what we're, we're actually measuring here. And then let's say our lowest activity level, uh, let's actually say that's, the December doesn't really matter. The idea is that we're saying, okay, here's the month where we have the lowest activity level, the lowest number of units. We produce 300 units, right? So we've got, you know, the other months don't matter, right? Because we just need a couple of sets of coordinates here. And so now, let me just scroll down here a little bit. We're going to take that, that highest cost minus the lowest cost, being that 46.75 minus the 29.25, right? So that's going to be in our numerator. So let me just let me just start writing out this fraction so you can see it. So we're going to have our variable cost per unit. It's going to be equal to in the numerator we've got 4675 minus 2925, okay? And then in the denominator we're going to have uh, the activity levels, right? And by the activity levels, in this case, we're looking at the number of units, right? I just made something simple there. We're not going to think of units of what. We'll just say units of product, whatever you want to think of it as. So we've got the 850 minus the 300, okay? So 850 minus 300. So I'll just break this down one step further, and let me just change change colors here. So this is going to give us 1,750 over 550. This is a variable cost per unit. It's not the total variable cost, right? So, so actually, we'll, let me just calculate this out here. So when we have this, we're going to break this down further. It's going to be 3.18, and I'm going to put a bar over the top because actually that 1.8 is repeating. Uh, so $3.18 uh, per unit of variable cost. So when we want to know the actual total variable cost, then we would actually say, okay, for March, we would take that 850 and multiply it by the $3.18. Okay, so let, let me come down, and then let's show you how to actually go ahead and, and calculate both the fixed cost and the variable cost, right? So 
So we haven't said anything about the fixed cost component yet, and you might be wondering. So, okay, so our fixed cost is just going to be the total cost, right? So, so let's just pick one month and start with that, and then that'll allow us to solve for the other month. So we'll start uh, with the, we, we got the, our fixed cost is going to be our total cost minus our variable cost, right? That's, that's pretty intuitive. And let just, me just change colors here again. So we know that our total cost right here, we know that's 4,675 4, because it's given. So let's just write that down right here, 4,675, right? Now the variable cost, we don't know that. We just solve for variable cost per unit, right? So let me just, we're going to create this relationship that I'm going to put in parentheses. So we're going to have the per unit, that 318, and bear in mind, I just wrote 318, but it's actually got that bar repeating, so it's like 1.8 repeating. Um, so that $3.18, right? And then we're going to multiply that by the number of units, right? Because that was variable cost per unit, right? So for that month, we had 850 units. So I'm going to multiply it by that. So this, this whole thing right here, that's the total variable cost for that month, right? So now let's solve for our fixed cost. I'll just I'll just uh, bring that down. That's still I'll just abbreviate it FC over here. So let me just out now. We've got four thousand six hundred and seventy-five, and then if we if we actually multiply this out, that's going to give us two thousand seven hundred and four. And your number might be one dollar off from what I have because you might not have put in the repeating uh, one eight one eight so forth. Uh, so if you get 2703 or 2705 or something like that, it's just a rounding error. So now, ultimately, we, we just do the subtraction there. That's going to leave us, I believe, at 1,971 is going to be our fixed cost, right? And then this 2704 was the ver total variable cost for the month of March, right? Now, what this is saying, now we've kind of pieced out, right? We know what the fixed cost component is of our mixed cost, right? Because ultimately, our mixed cost, so this mixed cost, is going to equal to, or is going to be equal to the fixed cost plus this variable cost component, right? And so this variable cost component is going to be different. The total variable cost, the variable cost per unit is going to be the same for each month, right? It's that 318, but uh, we're going to have a different variable cost for each month, total variable cost, because we have a different amount of units produced in each month. And if you go ahead and, and do the numbers and you, you can take this 300 units and multiply it by the 3.18, you know, 18, 18, 18. If you, if you go ahead and multiply that out and then add it um, to the fixed cost that we just calculated of 1,971, uh, you're going to end up with that 29.25. So we've basically solved for our variable cost per unit. Uh, we've submit, now we have a formula where we can go ahead and calculate the, the total variable cost for any given month. And then of course, we know now what the fixed cost is in general. So we've actually gone ahead and completely parsed out uh, what the mixed cost is using the high-low method.